Hi fellow Earthlings, this is Earthling 6455466328 and this video is I don't know how to live a long life but I think that yeah that's what the video is about it's about living a long life or at least about avoiding the major causes of death and thereby prolonging your life um, I think living a long life is something that we would all like to do, especially a, a nice, healthy one, where we don't have some of these elderly issues like osteoporosis and bad hips, bad joints, diabetes, heart disease. Uh, I guess, is it, what is it, that respiratory system disease with your heart, lung, and... The rest of them, yeah, without chronic disease and pain and all this other stuff. And I was thinking about it the other day, and I decided, well, I didn't really decide. I just had this nagging thought that, hey, maybe I should talk about this. And my nagging thought was that all you have to do at any age to make sure that you survive is to look up the major causes of death for whatever age that you are and avoid those things. Um, <laughs> it seems simple enough, doesn't it? But it was never something that I thought, hey, I'm five. <laughs> Let me see what the major causes of death would be at five and make sure I avoid those. Um, and I'm just now thinking of it now. Um, but anyway, let me just run right into it. At my age, whatever that might be, I figure that I should be trying to avoid things like cancers, um, heart attack diabetes, uh, stroke, um, yeah, those sound like the major ones that I should be worried about, um, and, uh, since I've managed to reduce my weight, I think that that has really reduced my likelihood of heart disease, diabetes, stroke, I think maybe even cancer, yeah. I think cancer as well, because um, I think after smoking, the next worst thing for you to be is to be obese or overweight. So by making sure that I am not, um, I can cut down on many of those things. What is a little bit um, disappointing when you really dig into it, though, is that even if you are, I mean, if you're morbidly obese, definitely, you're going to have a major, um, major likelihood of dying from certain things. Like, you know, we can point to a lot of famous actors like John Candy, um, Mr. Belushi from the Blues Brothers, um, that guy who was in those, uh, on SNL, that big guy. Who was with the skinny guy and he they did a couple of movies together i can't remember his name um what is the name of that singer luther vandross um well biggie did not really die of heart disease or anything like that but you have these you know larger people who end up with problems and um obviously it's a good thing if uh, we can reduce those things. But as I was saying, when you look at that really the risk of death and how much you have removed um, your risk of death by not being um, morbidly obese or even overweight, it isn't really that much. It's, well, I don't like to do research for these videos um, because in order to... I would like to do these things for a long time and in order to do them for a long time they have to be sustainable and in order to be sustainable 
they shouldn't take that much effort to do. So I, that's one of the reasons. I mean, I started off trying to do a lot of research for them, and I realized that the more research that I did, the more that I felt I needed to do. I was never co covering a topic completely, and in the end, I couldn't barely get a video finished because I never thought that I was finished. But suffice to say that when I looked it up, it's not like being morbidly obese or overweight doubles or triples or quadruples your risk of heart disease and cancer and stroke. It's just like a percentage. You know, like if, if you had a, a chance of, of dying of maybe um, a 5% chance, and that's really what it is, a cancer, heart disease, and stroke at different ages where, you know, doctors are telling us you need to be careful of this, you need to be careful of that. When you look at the percentages, they're like, really? Should I be wasting my time even thinking about this stuff? I mean, that's what happens, I guess, when you start going down the list of ways to die. Um, smoking really, really increases your risk of, of many of these diseases. But once you cut out smoking and you reach to obesity, uh, obesity, yeah, it's bad for you, but not orders of magnitude bad for you. It's just really like, you know, worst case, doubles this or doubles that. So, but, you know, you do what you have to do. Um, but some of the ways that, uh, aside from reducing um, your weight to a reasonable level, and I think um, it had, in one instance, it had to do particularly with your, the size of your waist. The size of your waist apparently correlates more uh, strictly or more closely with your risk of dying of some of these diseases than your BMI or your, not your BMI, your cholesterol, for example. So there's all this talk when you reach a certain age of you have to make sure that your cholesterol is this. But at the end of it, it's, it's more about how overweight you are um, than it is about your, your cholesterol count. Um, but anyway, aside from uh, trying to make sure you have a, a certain amount of reduced, uh, you've reduced your weight to an ideal level, whatever ideal might be. Other things that you can do to try to prolong your life might be um, exercise. Because exercise is going to be good for your bones, which is, you know, osteoporosis is a problem. You don't want to have to deal with uh, broken hips and stuff as you get older. I'm not anywhere close to that. But, um, yeah, you don't want to have to deal with uh, broken hips. And this is something maybe might be useful for your your parents, your grandparents, and so on. But of course, the problem with that is that uh, it's really hard to change other people. Um, the most that you can do is be an example. I think that if you want to try to help people around you, the best thing that you can do is to be a good example because being a hypocrite does not encourage anybody to listen to you. Um, if you say something like, exercise is good for you, and then you go on the couch and you sit down for however many hours, which I have to admit, I don't do because I don't watch TV. Uh, I'm on a computer most of the time, and seeing as I have to help my uncle, I'm not. But what I mean by that is that I don't exercise every single day um, <laughs> what I'm trying to do these days, really, is to um, is high intensity um, workouts. So it's basically ten minutes that I try to exercise for um, three times a week. Um, a friend of mine, he was telling me that he goes out and he makes sure he exercises for about an hour a day. And that sounds great, except that I really, I didn't, when I was doing a little bit more exercise, um, I was trying to run, 
it was not really I didn't have to take care of my uncle that's that's one thing um, and I didn't have other things that I was trying to do like for example this YouTube channel I wasn't trying to do that um, not to make an excuse I probably could still try to incorporate that into my life but just here I was and am hoping that high intensity workouts really are really work because I don't want to spend an hour running or exercising because I, I don't like it <laughs> I, I don't really like exercise I've never really liked exercise but for the, there was a period of time when I was trying to make sure that I was at least doing that so but um, I'm just hoping keeping my my fingers crossed that high intensity workouts and you know one of the things I suppose beyond all of these other things is looking at what the research says if we keep an eye on the research and um, as I might have mentioned in another video what we think works eventually we realize that it doesn't um, with respect to the half-life of, of knowledge information and so on so if we keep an eye out for the research we are probably going to become more and more aware of things that are going to be um, better or things that have been conclusively or more assuredly um, proven to work based on what the research says so I think that might be it um, really trying to pay attention uh, if you can stop smoking that's great if you don't smoke that's great if you don't vape that's great if you have lost weight that's great if you try not to eat meat um, too often or at least reduce it that's great as well uh, fish is great for you but again you know it's when you really really drill down it's not like you're going to I don't know it, it the numbers don't make you excited to say okay um, if I exercise an hour every single day I'm gonna live 20 years longer no there are conflicting studies and the amount that you add supposedly to your life doesn't really seem to be huge amounts if any in some instances with respect to some studies um, and this is something that I guess I need to look up myself as I'm mentioning it but anyway this video is getting a little bit long and um, I know I ramble but and I just want to make that clear that's one of the things that I like about the Simpsons and if this in, can in any way I can in any way em emulate the Simpsons by any of my videos that would be great because I love that you can start a video about or an episode of the Simpsons about Bart becoming a yo-yo champion and at the end of the episode it's now about him faking a real Faking, pretending to be someone for his teacher so that his teacher feels that she's in a romantic relationship and in the end, um, ending that relationship well. That's amazing. Anyway, guys, uh, wish me luck. Uh, like or unlike, comment and or subscribe or share. I'd appreciate it. And thank you very much. Bye.